To General Jack Kane on this development, General, you probably heard, uh, Jennifer, there, this idea, uh, however, you know, unusual it seems, that, that Vladimir Putin could resort to, to chemical weapons. Uh, would he? Do you think he would? Well, if he does, I mean, he's just changed the whole war. I mean, NATO will have to get involved in the war if he's using chemical weapons. I cannot imagine us standing by and letting that happen. After all, we did respond when Bashar al-Assad uh, used chemical weapons twice uh, during the Trump administration. We failed to respond during the Biden administration. Um, and I, I think if, if he, for the life of me, I don't know why we're letting Putin put fear in us when we should be putting fear in Putin by that. We're not, uh, we're not moving the, the fighters into Ukraine. Why? Because we fear Putin may escalate. We should be telling him unequivocally, you know, what our concerns are and, and drive this thing in, in the right direction. Certainly, the world is not going to tolerate the use of chemical weapons or nuclear weapons, for that matter. And I cannot fathom the thought that Putin, who is struggling here way beyond anything he imagined, his forces are two weeks in here and they still haven't taken a major city and they have... By anybody's definition now, they're starting to experience heavy casualties that somehow he would, he would ignite uh, chemical weapons and involve NATO in a war that he's struggling with in one country, much less deal with 30 countries who outnumber him four to five to one. Makes, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't know what we're afraid of, to be frank about it, uh, Neil. So, General, what you're saying, though, is... Chemical weapons, the use of chemical weapons would change everything. NATO would invariably get involved at that point. It doesn't have to be like a, you know, an air zone thing or, you know, using the airspace, that this, that alone would be a catalyst to get NATO involved. A a absolutely. And, and mm. clearly, uh, Putin should know that. If we tell him privately or we tell him, tell him publicly and uh, stop this brinkmanship that he's doing, he's, listen, I think Putin... After all the great work the administration has done, Neil, to, to get unification with NATO, and that NATO is actually strengthening itself as a result of it, and was displaying the best unity I've seen in 20-plus years. And then we, we make this lame decision not to give the Ukrainians 24 fighters because somehow that is going to escalate the war. I mean, that is Putin putting fear in us, and it's lame as far as I'm concerned, and I, and I think we have to show a little bit more spine in standing, standing up to this guy. Um, and yes, you know, General, it, it, but, but let me ask you when, about when, that. When General, we're weak uh, like that, ahead, Neil, when we're, let me yeah. just finish the point. When we're weak Please. like that, you know, when we show that, uh, that we're intimidated because uh, likely somebody in Russia said that's going to be an act of war if you do something like that. They probably told the Poles that. When we're intimidated like, like that, what does that really invite? It invites more intimidation and coercion. It, puts the, it makes the situation actually more dangerous because he can take, what, the next step, possibly chemical weapons, because he thinks NATO won't respond? That, that's what a weakness sounds like, and it makes the situation more grave. So, General, uh, uh, let me ask you this. There's been growing questions about the ineptitude of this invasion on the part of the Russians, or a little more than two weeks in. Some quibble as yeah. to whether that, that is, you know, we're just impatient or whatever. But uh, there's an interesting item in Bloomberg News today talking about the Russian prowess being called into question. And they quote a defense analyst general who says there are at least some areas that give serious cause for a recalibration of assumptions about Russian capabilities. It goes on to say the operational training issues are longer term if they're having the same problems as 14 years ago and they have not been able to make any real improvement then there's reason to suspect this is something they cannot do within the current political system. In other words, uh, they're not the, the, the terrifying military force maybe the world feared, and maybe they're showing that every day in Ukraine. What do you think? Well, I think Putin had that on, in his mind. He was going to showcase a professionalized military. Um, after crushing Ukraine, he would use the intimidation of that uh, to further his goals. 
What he's actually showing us here is an organization that is fundamentally flawed. They have leadership issues. They are very centralized. There's no flexibility at the tactical level. People at the senior level are calling all the shots. They have organizational capability problems. And then this is a combined arms fight that they're in. And the basic functions, they're failing at all three. One is you have to have reconnaissance. Where is the enemy? Send reconnaissance unit forward to identify where the enemy is. Aerial ground reconnaissance, not effective. Combined arms made body moving down a road. You see that road there that we all saw? If you're moving down that road with tanks, there's danger area on both sides building. Where's the infantry out protecting those tanks going down the road? If you have to be on the road, I wouldn't want to be on that road to begin with. And then their logistics mm. are all fouled up. They're not protecting their logistics, and they're not timely enough to sustain the main body and the reconnaissance units that are forward of them. These are the major functions of a combined arms army on the move, and they are failing at all three of those major functions. General, uh, really interesting, because this, this growing impression that they are a mighty force is now being called into question as well and what they do from here, but that could also mean yeah. more desperate measures on their part. We're watching closely. General, thank you very, very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.